Hello, all you beautiful guys and gals on the internet. Welcome to the first episode of Cisco's private collection. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video and ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. Now that the weekend is over and I have some of my sanity back, today we're going to be taking a look at my private collection. I have been playing Airsoft for a good amount of years now and I have seen some of you guys' comments of wanting to see what we personally run. So today we're going to be taking a look at my HK416 CQB. So like I said before, this is the VFC416. This is the original CQB version that came out in around 2012, which was about the time that I bought it. I actually bought this gun in parts. Uh, second hand uh, reason being because around that time it was the hype and still is this is before the a5 came out I think last year or the year before and it it's really near and dear to my heart it's very classic normally I build my guns in a two-tone configuration but for the 416 I wanted to keep it all black I felt it looked more sleek and that cool calling on the wall look the first thing that I changed off on this gun is going to be the rail system I went for the strike industries key mod crux rail and I I love it it lightened it up so much like literally dropped like two pounds and I hate it because literally a month after I purchased this rail, they came out with the M-Lock version and I couldn't return it or exchange it because I used the coupon code that was like all sales final. Damn. Really unfortunate. Yeah, I know. But it works. The main reason why I changed it up was to lighten up the overall gun because the original 416 CQB was super heavy. Um, still gives you the modularity that M-Lock would, and I'm really happy with it. I added an AIM Sports vertical grip on here. It does have a slight cant for a more comfortable position and allows me to do a more comfortable C-clamp. At the front end, I have the Mad Bull Fur Friends Blast Shield with a uh, muzzle brake, which is really cool because I can easily just twist this off and put that on there for the nice three-port flash hider. Or put that back on there for the blast shield. On real firearms, this is supposed to help keep the gas forward and not put gas into your, your teammate's face. But in airsoft, it's really cool. It just acts as an amplifier. And if you actually wear an ear pro, it does activate it because of how loud it is, which is really funny. Originally, I had MBUS flip up sights for my backup sights, but I swapped them out for the PTS iron sights. They're very slick and really nice. And I ran out of money because I spent it all on the rail, so I couldn't afford the MBUS pros. They work, he tastes cool, I like them. My optic choice is going to be the Vism T1 style red dot. Uh, this is actually really cool because it runs off a CR123A battery instead of the CR2032, so I do get a longer battery life. And it is running off of a button system instead of a dial system. If you know the dial system, uh, it runs smooth at first, but typically they wear down once dirt and stuff uh, gets inside it, and then they typically break. The buttons keep it really clean and I'm able to adjust it really easily. Uh, without having to like figure out what number I'm on I can easily just press the button and it is on a quick detach mount Which is very easy. I can just take it off if I need to and I can still rely on my iron sights Actually the coat witness so I don't even need to remove the optic unless like the glass breaks So it's really cool. So personally, I do believe that Vism is a step up above any like eBay clones They do have a lifetime warranty, which is always cool and their optics have always proven to be very well in my opinion Of course, they do have their lower tier optics but spend a little bit more money and you definitely get what you pay for. For lighting solutions, I am using a Element D-Ball, which is actually civilian legal. It uses a one milliwatt IR laser and it does have a visible laser as well. I do have it mounted toward the back because I'm using it more for navigation and spotting instead of actually aiming with. It does have a 280 lumen flashlight and what's really cool about it is it came with an IR lens filter for the flashlight as well if I wanted to strictly run night vision, but I just have it as a regular flashlight so I can trace BBs and like I said, just look around. I know that there are other clones of the D-Ball that have a stronger IR laser, but I didn't really want to blind any of my friends or any other players on the field. So keep that in mind guys when buying a D-Ball or something with an with a very powerful IR laser, it, it can cause harm, so we don't want to do that. For my pistol grip and my stock, I'm using PTS products. 
Uh, when I first built the gun, the A5 stock for the HK416 wasn't available, except for the real firearms, and I wasn't trying to spend that HK price. Oh. So I do like the PTS stock. It does have plenty of battery space, but that A5 stock got me, got me considering. Like, that is really Gucci. I think it might make this like a little bit more sleek and just perfect. So originally on here, I had a mag pole pistol grip, but I decided to change it out for the PTS one. It does put the motor at a better angle and uh, I just think it's a little bit more comfortable. The Maya grip was okay, but PTS did a very good job with their pistol grip and I like it a lot. And the last accessory that I've added to the gun is going to be the mag pole ASAP sling. This is probably one of the best uh, sling adapters for any AR platform. I really like it because it allows me to switch from left to right hand uh, without getting tangled up on the gun. And, and this is actually a real one. I had to file it down for it to fit the receiver. Um, no complaints. It was worth the hours of me sitting there with a little Swiss arm knife file <laughs> trying to get it down. Bye Dremel kids. So for magazines, I typically run the PTS EPMs or some BFC standard magazines because those typically feed the best in this gun. I do have some discontinued uh, P-Mags from Magpul, the licensed ones, but if you know about the 416 squared mag, well, you know that they don't fit very well. Right now, I do have one of Kevin's uh, discontinued murder mags in here. It actually fits pretty well, so thanks, Kev. I'm gonna keep this. So earlier in the video, I said that I got this gun in parts and internally the only parts that I got were the gearbox shell and the wire harness and that's all I really had to work with when building the gun. Going over the gearbox for the compression set we have a Lonex three ports ported cylinder with the cylinder head. I do have the SHS piston with a modified piston head. The second to last tooth has been shaved down for angle of engagement and we did add a sorbo pad to the cylinder head for uh, the correction of the angle as well. For the gear set, I do have a Lonex uh, the high speed gear set, so it's a 61 gear set, um, standard anti reversal latch, and the standard wire harness that I got with the gun. For the motor, I am using the Action Army, it's either a 40 or 45k motor, I honestly forgot, but right now it does give good trigger response and a decent rate of fire. But I am over drawing in amperage, it's drawing too much power, and I want to fix that, so I'm going to replace the standard wire harness with a MOSFET and reshim it just to make sure everything's running smoothly. Moving on to the barrel setup, I do have a Prometheus EG 6.03 inner barrel. It is the 300 millimeter length. I do have it with a pro wind hop up unit and a flat hop, but I was lucky enough to have Taylor put his Razzle Dazzle R hop in there, which performed fantastic. He's really good at doing those. Um, yeah, the range of this is like insane. If you've ever played at at Wildlands, I can shoot from one hill to the other on Firebase. Straight across, no issues. It is dope. So the only things that I think may need some work on the gun well, might be the A5 stock, I might swap that out. Still debating, and the wire harness. Um, I definitely wanna do like a gate Titan or some type of MOSFET, but that's gonna take me a couple paychecks to do, so eventually it'll be 100%. I'd say it's like 95, 98%. Uh, done, but always something to improve upon. So from when I got this gun back in 2012, I got it running around 2015 and then I kind of finalized it in 2018. So it took about six years to get to where it is right now and I'm still making changes. Honestly, you guys, I did have the builder's anxiety of wanting to complete the gun, but it, that's kind of the fun about it as well because over time I was able to add part to part, watch it build and grow, kind of like it was my baby and uh, seeing where it is now, I'm, I'm in love with the way it is, but it can change, it can grow even more. And I do believe that that is something you guys should keep in mind as well. Uh, you don't need to be super rich to, to build out an airsoft gun. Like I said, it took about eight years to get, or six years to get to where it is right now. And uh, add part to part, or add uh, you know a parts as you can, and eventually it'll turn out the way you want it. Thank you for visiting Cisco's private collection hopefully this video gives you some inspiration on what to add to your gun or maybe you make some changes to your gun i do believe that building your airsoft gun is one of the more enjoyable aspects of airsoft and i hope you feel the same way thank you for watching if you like the video give us a thumbs up 
Make sure you subscribe for more content and ring the bell to get notified whenever we upload a video. We're uploading Mondays and Fridays. Maybe our next video will be another roaster build. Stay tuned and you'll find out. See you guys later.